The first thing you should know about me is that I believe in signs, omens, premonitions. I grew up believing that things happen for a reason. That's the only way to explain why I'm alive. You see, I've spent a lot of time thinking about who I am, because I don't know where I came from. I'm a mystery to myself. I was born in late October or early November, but I don't know the exact day. When I was five years old, I picked October 31st for my party. Halloween. I thought that would make for a cool birthday. Whatever the real day was, I was left on Tom Ginn's doorstep when I was about a week old. His house used to be a church with a white steeple and a wall of stained glass windows. At night, in the darkness, my birth mother probably thought it was still a church, and I guess that's where you take a baby you're planning to abandon. She left me in an old Easter basket, strangely enough, nestled among green paper curly cues like a white chocolate bunny. I was dressed in a cotton onesie with faded pink stripes and a bonnet with flaps tied in a bow under my chin. The temperature outside was 39 degrees. Obviously, I don't remember that night, but sometimes I think about what it must have been like to be alone, freezing, crying, with no idea what I had done to be cast away. She left no note to tell me why. Tom Ginn wasn't home at the time. He was 40 miles away, night fishing under a cloudless, moonless sky in his favorite spot on Shelby Lake. You don't realize how many stars hang in the heavens until you experience one of those nights. Tom had a tent set up on the shore and a portable propane grill for cooking whatever he caught on the lake. It was a Saturday, his first night off in four weeks, and he was planning to camp on the beach until morning. If he'd done that, I would have died. Either the cold would have killed me, or an animal would have dragged me off. The woods near us are filled with wolves, raccoons, bears, and wolverines. We even have a mythical monster called the Ursulina that many townspeople swear is no myth. Any one of those predators would have torn a little baby limb from limb and consumed me. Thinking about it still makes me shiver. Tom had no idea of the danger I was in, or that I was there at all. He was enjoying the night on the placid water. The air was fresh and sweet, tinged with the scent of pine. His boat was at the mouth of a cove between the trees where it was utterly still. There was just him, the lake, the wilderness, and the stars. It's a big, big place that makes you feel small. He was sipping hot black coffee from a thermos and jigging for walleye. He'd been out there for an hour without any luck, but he was in no hurry. That was when God sent him the sign. Like an angel, a snowy owl swooped down from the treetops and landed on the other end of the boat. Tom was so shocked that he couldn't even take a breath. His mouth hung open with a jug of coffee at his lips. The owl perched there and watched him with its stoic, unblinking eyes. Its head was a perfect white, its body checkered over with white and gray. Breaking the silence of the night, the owl squawked out a loud, raspy call. When Tom didn't answer, the owl called to him again and again, each time with an urgent impatience. To Tom, the owl's cry sounded like the same word over and over. Home.